Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. The patient in this procedure attended with bilateral, so when we say bilateral we mean both ears, severely impacted earwax. Um, upon attending the patient could barely hear, um, hear me. Um, we have the aspirator machine, the medical suction device, uh, just behind the patient and it I wouldn't say it's uh, as loud as a lawnmower, but it's not far off uh, externally and the patient wasn't able to hear that. So it just gives you an indication of how impacted the earwax was. Um, so we're just starting off with the left ear. In this ear, the patient also has otitis externa. Otitis externa is an umbrella term given for an infection and or inflammation of the outer ear canal. Uh, there's different types of otitis externa. You can get what we call superficial otitis externa. That's when you've just got a bit of dry skin, a bit of itchiness, a bit of psoriasis. You can get a more deep otitis externa. So that's when you get swelling, inflammation of the ear canal. You can get something really serious called necrotizing otitis externa. So a necrotizing otitis externa, or sometimes also called malignant otitis externa, that can be that can be life threatening if it's not treated. And again, it all stems from an infection in the outer ear. It's more prevalent in elderly patients or patients with diabetes who are more immunocompromised. And so as a result, this infection, because they're immunocompromised, reduced blood flow, this infection can just get worse and snowball. Um, and it can start eroding uh, the bone around the ear canal, the temporal bone. It can extend to the mastoid bone, which is the bone behind the, the ear. It can also go towards the meninges, the dura, so the liquid, the membranous layer that surrounds the brain can lead to a brain abscess, so it can be very serious. Uh, in this case, the patient has just got superficial, just dry skin, so we recommend some over-the-counter um, acetic acid, uh, which is designed for, 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 for this, uh, for an outer infection, otitis externa. So the patient has got very dry earwax, I'm just using a combination of uh, microsuction, and just at the moment, an ear hook. So the ear hook, uh, it didn't, extract the wax in one large lump as I was hoping. However, it did dissect it and that then enables me to go back in with, with microsuction to remove the rest. So it's almost like it had a chisel effect, a hammer with chisel. We got the ear hook in, sliced the wax up, broke it into little pieces, gone back in with microsuction. You can see it's slowly coming out now. Um, so you can just you can see we've removed a lot of wax already, but there's still loads here. So another dry piece of wax now. The patient also has narrow, twisty ear canals, which means they are more likely to um, develop earwax impaction. So earwax typically in, I would say, 92 to 95% of the population, at least in the UK, the wax naturally migrates out of the ear. So the skin that lines the ear canal, um, as it dies and sheds, it naturally migrates sideways and outwards towards the entrance of the ear, but like a conveyor belt. And as it does, any wax that's sitting on the, on the surface of the skin also comes out with the dead skin as it's migrating. Just got a final remaining of a piece of dry wax really impacted against the eardrum beyond the isthmus, so where we are now, we have a narrowing in the ear canal before the ear canal widens again. So about half a centimetre away from the eardrum, we call that an isthmus. So this dry piece of wax is lodged beyond this narrowing, uh, right up against the, the eardrum. Um, so we just slowly extracted that and brought that forwards. So yeah, so 92 to 95% of the population earwax naturally migrates. That's because the skin that lines the ear canal, as it dies and sheds, it moves sideways and out of the ear like a conveyor belt. Um, and as it does, it takes with it any earwax that's sitting on the surface. Um, some people lose the ability uh, for their skin to naturally migrate. Uh, radio, people who've undergone radiotherapy uh, around the skull, around the ear region, they're, they're quite known to lose the, the ability for the skin and the ear canal to migrate as it dies and sheds. Um, if you've got a narrow, twisty ear, as the skin's migrating out of the ear canal, it's getting trapped around. Uh, the bends and the narrowings, you get a natural uh, buildup of earwax. If a client has abnormal widenings, erosions um, of the ear canal, the skin as it sheds, it gets, gets trapped in these abnormal or abnormal narrow um, widenings and erosions, and you get a natural buildup of wax there. 
Of course, if you use uh, cotton birds, um, if you wear earbuds or hearing aids, that can push the wax further in. Um, some people just secrete wax quicker than the ear can naturally expel it. So on average, the rate of the skin migration is about, I think, 3.5 millimetres a month. Uh, similar to the growth of your fingernail so it could just be some people the, the skin migration is working but it's not it can't keep up with the natural secretion of wax in the ear so you get a, a, a therefore build up so the left ear is done we're just in the right ear so in the right ear the consistency of the wax is completely different uh, it's a lot more uh, wet and soft and loose and I suspect the reason for this is that the patient's ear canal entrance in the right ear is a lot more narrow, it's almost collapsed, and I feel that's creating a lot of humidity within the ear. And that increased temperature, humidity, moisture, it's changing the consistency of the earwax in this ear, so it's a lot more mushy. It's a bit more tricky actually to remove. Sometimes you prefer wax to be a bit drier and harder because you can get a good grit with the micro suction, uh, with the zonal suction prime and extract. So there was a gap at the top of the ear canal, the roof, so I just slid in with the Jobson horn, also known as an ear correct, managed to get a section out of wax, so you can see it's very mushy and wet, almost like loose stool. So I just put some olive oil uh, earwax drops in just to soak, change the consistency of the wax. Olive oil tends to help bind wax together, so it's very loose and mushy. Uh, like mashed potato or loose stool, it binds it together and so uh, when you suction out this uh, this wax it comes out in large chunks. You can always compare the effect olive oil has on soft gooey wax as an, an, an egg would have on a potato cake or fish cake recipe. You put an egg in it binds all the ingredients to, to, together. So just back into the ear canal uh, using micro suction again. So there's a lot of oil so what I'm doing at the moment I'm just suctioning some of this excess oil out. So as we do, you get a bit of blurriness, so I'm just going to be a bit careful. Just at the, the base of the ear canal, there's a lot of keratin here. You can start seeing this keratin getting peeled off the ear canal and the ear canal is becoming visible. So we're still quite lateral near the entrance. And you can see the technique is little brush stroke movements up, um, slowly moving the wax away from the canal, loosening it. So the wax has been there a long time. You, you know that by the colour, it's really dark, it's oxidised. And in a moment, when you go back, when we go back into the ear, you'll see that this remaining plug of wax, it's trapped, it's engulfed by the ear canal, so the ear canal is slightly inflamed. And the inflammation of the ear canal has trapped, it's engulfed itself around this plug of wax. So where I am now, at the top, you'll see in a moment, hopefully, the top part of the ear canal, and it's the wax has gone underneath it. it so the canal is almost enveloped, it's, that's probably the best way to describe it. The ear canal has enveloped itself, you can see that at the top, the canal is enveloped itself over this plug of wax, which makes it more tricky. So we're just loosening it off the posterior canal wall, and what I want to do now is from the roof, where this, the canal has engulfed the, the plug of wax, I'm trying to roll this forward, you can see I'm bringing it forward, rolling it, and we're making good progress. So just a bit more to go. Um, once I've removed this plug of wax, you'll see that the patient in the, this ear, the right ear, they've got a very pronounced narrowing, that isthmus that I made reference to in the first ear, about half a centimetre away from the eardrum. The ear, you get a natural narrowing and the ear canal expands and widens out again. And you'll see on the isthmus, uh, where this narrowing is, uh, a bit of redness there. And that's because this plug of wax is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's expanding and expanding and it's putting pressure on this isthmus, the narrow, which causes a bit of redness either side. So you can see there, left and right, it's a bit of redness on the canal walls, and that's the narrowing, that's the isthmus. So this plug of wax was expanding, and it was compressing against the ear canal, causing a bit of redness to develop. A bit of skin there, just hovering over. It comes out brilliant. If not, I'm not too concerned. But we managed to remove all the wax from both ears. Uh, patient's very happy indeed. I advise the patient to attend a bit more regularly. Um, there's less evidence of otitis externa in this ear. The ear canal looks a lot more healthy, uh, it's less dry. So that otitis externa, that psoriasis eczema, if you like, it's more prevalent in the left ear. Um, in a moment, you'll still still image of all the wax. You can see, I just don't see how dry, a lot of this wax is from the left side, see how dry it was. Uh, how dark it is, so it's been there for a while, it's oxidised. I hope you enjoyed that video guys, uh, also, also hope you're all keeping well and safe wherever you are in the world, and I shall speak to you all soon.